there are a lot of game engines out there to choose from. Some are just failed engines that they just never really took off, like Amazon Lumberyard. This was a language bought by Amazon and it's based on CryEngine. This kind of fell off and the only, the only game that came out of it was New World. Other engines, smaller engines or niche ones like Defold, which is more for mobile game development. But one that's standing out, that's not even really a game engine, is Raylib. And this, this engine has been, or framework I should say, has been getting very popular over the years. If we look at the Google Trends, we can see that Raylib is gaining a lot of traction and it's becoming more popular and popular in the world of programming and game development. Now, if we compare it to a more classic one like super fast multimedia library, we can see that it's beginning to get come on track to it and is matching it. Uh, but if you also compare it to SDL, for example, a lower level one, it's you can see it's still quite far off, but remains to be seen if it will catch up to its popularity. So what is Raylib exactly? Well, it's a game framework, a lot like SDL, and game frameworks is different to a game engine in that an engine provides you all the functionalities to make a game very easily. Uh, it usually has a GUI, it has a 3D world, it has a 2D world, it has a lot of scripting into it. While with a framework, it just gives you kind of like the bare minimum and then you do what you want with it. An engine will provide you like all the collision, the pathfinding, while a framework won't, it will just give you the options to render and it might let you check for collision if, if two sprites or objects have collided but you need to deal with the way they respond to it so it will just return true and you've got to say well don't move or do that so specifically with Raylib this framework is meant to be small and fast and we can see that this is the documentation or the PDF the cheat sheets as we can see and if we scroll down you can see it's tiny it's actually about six PDF pages so that's how small it is and it has everything you need to make a game it can be supports 3d and 2d it has all your basic features so if you scroll to the top we have a look at the main core of it you have it to initialize your window you can show or hide cursor you can go clear the background for the color of course you can display the fps is sh the shader for open gl supports so if you're doing 3d you got to program your own shaders for that but why would you want to choose raylib over sdl2 sdl2 or another framework is going to have these features well it's kind of down here, it's the 60 plus programming language bindings. I mean, if you click on that, this will give us a GitHub table showing us all the languages that are at least known that have bindings. This, there's obviously could be ones that people have just never shown. And there are some very obscure languages that I've never heard of before, like Crystal, I've not heard of Crystal before. There's Chez, there's Chez, but you have your big popular ones. You got your C Sharp, you got your lisp if you're into lisp you have your free basic you even got fortran if you're thinking of a more fun functional you got your golang you got your java all the big heavy hitters there and also your obscure ones if you're familiar with lewis scripting then they got you covered now it's important to know though that the not all of them are going to be on the later version so the later version is 5.0 and you can see some of them just have not been updated and they're still on the older version 4.0 some just automatically get updated doesn't really matter which is fantastic Obviously, a lot of your big languages are going to go up to 5.0. It depends on who, if the man whoever's managing it is capable, of just keeps updating the bindings. There is something important to note about this: is that using other bindings won't get you the same performance as using the just the normal Raylib, the C and C++. Is that because some of these languages are obviously just not slow? Python, for example, is a slow language, and if we scroll to their documentation, we can see the performance. You can see that in some cases, you get a fraction of the performance compared to the original Raylib. Uh, so in this one is the bunny marks and the bunny's marks is just loading a bunch of sprites until it goes below 60 FPS so you can kind of gauge how much you can handle before FPS dips. And you can see that even in the best case you're only going to get about 20% of the performance. And this in this case it's because calling to C is very expensive as I say here it's you know it's it's costly. So that really eats into performance. Now I've just launched Godot to kind of show you why, why would someone want to pick Raylib rather than an engine like Godot which gives you all these features. Well, look at it. It's kind of very jarring to people who have never used a game engine. And for programmers who just are familiar with good old text like VS Code or something and they just type it, run it, see if it compiles, if they've got any bugs and debug it. Rather than this, it's very user interface. It's trying to be intuitive as well, but it can be unintuitive because it's so 
different to just normal programming and it can be like well where do i start it's like it's not exactly the same so you have this level scene you've got the files you've got this little terminal here you got this node thing you've got all these these little 2d scenes and it's like oh where do i where do i start and then i can open the script and it's like where does the script run and it, where the hell do i compile difficult to get into as compared to something like ArrayLib. so if we go back to looking at the documentation on python and we'll see so you can see the looking at the python and just a quick example is that you just need this it's a very traditional way of programming you've got your while loops you've got that and uh, in this case it takes obviously a lot more time to develop a game but it actually gets you a lot more familiar with the sort of way a game would be made and run and you actually get that closer optimization to performance than like something like Godot. With the Godot you're sort of you use what they've got it's a lot difficult to go in and really fine tune it as in something like Raylib or a game framework you're just using sort of the bare minimum and you're so so much lower level to the hardware which is why you can get such great performance like even in C look 16 bunny sprites on a single scene you know it's very impressive you can probably get very well and hyper optimized games as I like to call it because you are able to create algorithms you're able to create chip collision detection that is specifically suited for your needs rather than something like Godot you kind of you can just let the Genjin deal with it, which is perfectly fine these engines are great you know many many big games out there are written using Unreal Engine and are able to capable of doing amazing stuff there's no need to build a proprietary engine in some cases there is a bigger desire because you have a unique niche you need to fill for me Raylib is just a great learning tool and just kind of a way for me to test something really good for prototyping I like to use it with Python because again Python is so simple and whenever I'm doing a tutorial I like to use Raylib as a visual indication of how it should work and like with the procedural racetrack I did I use Raylib as the visual indicator on how a racetrack would look in a game in both 3D and 2D it didn't require much effort and all I had to do was obviously pass array of points to show it and another thing alongside a framework is just building GUI applications it doesn't actually have to be game specific building a GUI application with something like Unreal Engine or Godot is that's just so heavy that's such a there's a lot of things you're including in that to perhaps just run a simple application to send data but some other things that it has plenty of examples that you can see and just play for yourself so this one, for example, I can actually control it with the WASD keys to see the right the camera and it provides me the code below. So it actually also compiles to the web, which is pretty impressive if you ask me. And so you've got the full code here. You might need to decipher it for your own bindings, but that's, a, I think, a very good skill to learn is you're able to port code from one language to the other to make you a very proficient programmer. So that's something I highly recommend. So yeah, all these examples are contribute by the community and you even have some game examples and some bonuses is that there are some extra libraries one of my favorite is the wet ray gui which is this one here which provides you with some nice little themes some easy buttons that have interaction already pre-built made by the developer it's very cool and helps speed up development of applications and games specifically with applications i think this is great for building some GUIs for some robots, for example. You want that native app because it has so many bindings. So Python is very popular with robotics because it uses ROS, the robot operating system that runs on Ubuntu and uses Python. And so you could use the Python binding for Raylib and then use Rage UI to have yourself a nice juicy native app front end for your robot. And so what is your opinion with Raylib? Is is, are you a fan of it? Are you uh, someone who likes to use more traditional game engines or do you use a completely different game framework like uh, SFML or SDL2 or Pi Game, for example? Or are you someone who's interested in getting to it? Do comment down below and subscribe for more programming and software related stuff. See ya.